So Bitcoin, so wonder to yourself, what the heck is it? Why should I use it? Why on earth is anybody using it? Isn't it just fake money in the sky somewhere? Well, in this video, we're going to answer that question and many more. So sit tight, strap in and gently caress that like button for the YouTube algorithm, because we're going to go over why cryptocurrency is or isn't the thing that you should get into next if you have a major case of FOMO. But before we do any of that, though, welcome back to Finance Squared. I'm your host, Derek West. Here on Finance Squared, we love talking about things like investments, personal finance, getting out of debt, Bitcoin, all the great stuff that makes a great YouTube channel, you know, except for cat videos. But in any case, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin today and why on earth it makes sense for you to own a little bit of the next great trend in currencies. You know, before we even do that, though, we need to understand what Bitcoin is and why Bitcoin is at the top of the perch when it comes to crypto. And of course, to do any of that, you need a brief introduction to what cryptocurrencies are. And to be able to invest with confidence, you need to understand mentally what it is you're investing in. Always remember, before you invest in anything, try and understand what it is, whether that's cryptocurrency, whether that's real estate, whether that's creating your own Shopify store or Amazon FBA storefront. All these things you need to have a mastery of before you can actually profit from and have a mastery of them, you need an intellectual understanding of what they are. It's no different than with Bitcoin, for example. So to dive into that, let's talk about what Bitcoin is, what cryptocurrencies are, the technology that backs both of those things. So the most popular cryptocurrency that we all know of are based off of a technology called the blockchain. I can hear the gears grinding in your head right now. What is a blockchain, you might be asking. Well, to make things nice and easy, you can think of a blockchain the same way you think of an Excel spreadsheet. You know, Microsoft Excel, the spreadsheets that we all love to hate. In an Excel spreadsheet, you enter in information into columns and rows to keep track of the data. That spreadsheet can be as big as you want, as long as you have enough hardware. A blockchain stores certain types of information, but only a certain amount of it, called a block. <laughs> Believe me, it's all going to start to come together when we get to the end of this video. But when that amount of information runs out, information in that block, another block is added and linked to the original block. That first block then becomes locked down, essentially, and you are unable to change it. If you run this blockchain on distributed machines, and when I say distributed, don't get too confused about that terminology. Distributed simply means one machine's here, one machine's there. It could be here in your living room in, let's say, Dallas, Texas, or in your living room in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, perhaps in a software company's living room out in Tokyo, Japan. The thing is, when you say distributed, you mean that the application runs in multiple places in different geographical locations and doesn't necessarily have to be on one machine the whole time. That's what we mean when we say distributed. But if that blockchain is running on distributed machines, then you have a distributed blockchain. These are all terms you're going to hear when you listen to techies wax philosophical about the positives and negatives of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Now, distributed blockchains are the basis for all cryptocurrencies. Well, the ones that I know of anyway. And Bitcoin is simply the first of these cryptocurrencies to be generally available to the public. Now, we were talking about the blockchain earlier. In a blockchain, each node, that is to say each machine in the distributed blockchain network, has a full record of data that has been stored on the blockchain since its creation. In Bitcoin's case, this would be the entire history of Bitcoin transactions, each and every one. If one node in the Bitcoin network attempted to alter the information about a transaction, the rest of the nodes in that network would attempt to correct that misinformation about that transaction. They would be using their own records of that transaction to correct the record, if you will. And because of that, that transaction would be rejected. Now, this is all well and good, you might be saying to yourself. Still confusing, however, but why does it make Bitcoin money? There are many reasons for that, but let's take a look into how transactions occur and get a better understanding of that to give you more insight into how the technology behind it allows for uh, allows for Bitcoin to be perceived as currency. The original blockchain was designed to operate without a central authority. Let's say a central banker as an example. The problem with that is the central banker and banks in general are key to validating transactions. In other words, when you make a transaction with, let's say, a credit card or with a check, what has to happen is there is a person behind that credit card who says, this person is who he says he is, and he has enough money in his bank account to give you for goods and services. That's sort of easy to do when you say have a $10 bill in your pocket, but even in this instance, that $10 bill has to be validated by the bank. Is this currency valid or is this currency counterfeit? Who finds that out? When do they find it out? 
Do you even know? No, you do not. That is one of the ways in which a transaction needs to be validated. Another way the transaction needs to be validated, does the thing you're purchasing actually cost $10? Do you have $10 to give to the cashier? All these things and more need to be validated for that transaction to go through. Putting away my $10 bill here. Don't want you guys to steal it. Now, all this work has to be done. If there is no banker to perform that role, how will that get done, you may ask? Well, through transaction verification. Utilizing cryptographic keys, basically sequences of seemingly random characters, users are identified and given access to their accounts or wallets in a Bitcoin scenario or a blockchain scenario. Each user has their own private key and a public key that everyone can see. Using them both, they create a secure digital identity to authenticate themselves via digital signatures and unlock the transactions that they want to perform. Other users in the system then agree to a transaction. And once the verification has been performed, this transaction or the block gets added to the chain of blocks. In public blockchains like Bitcoin, the decision to add transactions to the chain is made by the consensus, meaning that the majority of nodes will agree that the transaction is valid. The reason why nodes agree to do this is that there are incentives to validate transactions. Nodes that validate transactions actually earn more cryptocurrency, in our particular case, Bitcoin. Now this is called proof of work. It's another technical term you're gonna hear from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency geeks. Don't let it phase you. But it's essentially proving that the transactions are legit, in a manner of speaking. But the people who own the computers in this distributed network that we're talking about are solving cryptographic problems i.e. complex mathematical problems to be able to validate the transactions and to add a block to the chain. This whole process is called mining. And like I just mentioned, mining is rewarded with additional cryptocurrency. And Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency out of the gate that utilizes blockchain as its underlying technology. Now, if we think about it, there have been other attempts at cryptocurrencies before. And if you think about it real hard, credit cards can be considered the original digital currency. And they're not necessarily cryptographic currencies, but they mostly only exist as digital currency that can be accessed by a piece of plastic. And if you think about it, nowadays, quite a few people are using aluminum credit cards. But in any case, you pay for that access to credit with, by way of interest charged by the issuing company. I have a whole video on credit card companies and how to use them appropriately to increase your financial health. So take a look at the video card above or wherever it is to get some information on that. It's aside from the point. Back to Bitcoin. One of the strange things about Bitcoin is really it's invented by an unknown person or persons. The theoretical foundation for blockchain was established in a white paper written and published in 1991 by Stuart Haber and W. Scott Stornetta. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing those names correctly or not. They're sort of weird sounding names, Haber and Stornetta. It wasn't until 2009 when someone who called themselves or himself or herself, who knows, Satoshi Nakamoto launched Bitcoin. That's when the first cryptocurrency became a reality. And since then, cryptocurrency has gone gangbusters. Just think about the current price in US dollars. As of the time of publishing of this video, the price of Bitcoin is at $41,387.50. I'll make sure to edit the right number in beneath me or above me, whichever one is more visible to you, so that you can see how much it actually is at the time of editing of the video. But one Bitcoin is worth more than a pretty nice sports car. Bitcoin is by far and away more valuable than any other currency on earth and even most physical commodities per unit price. Gold and silver don't even come close. But that begs the question, will it go higher and why? And that question begs the question, why didn't I invest in a cryptocurrency mining rig in 2010 when I could have got in for dirt cheap? First things first, rear view vision is 2020. Secondly, I hate to be the bearer of even more bad news. I actually invested in cryptocurrency way back in 2013, before its mass critical appeal. Now, no, I didn't become a cryptocurrency billionaire. I put a little bit of money into it just out of curiosity and never really thought about it again. And quite frankly, I still don't. I'll get into the reasons why in a second. Whenever I tell people that, they always ask me, aren't you excited about investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Yes and no. I'll get into the reasons why in a second. The question on your mind should be, will it go even higher or will it come crashing down the second you buy in? You see, that typically happens when people um, who have FOMO invest in anything really. Whenever the stock market is high, people see it, they then invest, it then drops, at which point they say the stock market is rigged, they then get out, and then the stock market goes right back up, which they then say to themselves, yes, the stock market is definitely rigged. However, people that do that are falling for classic, are falling for the classic inverse of investing best practices. Remember, buy low, sell high. And that means being disciplined whenever you buy something. 
don't necessarily buy into something when it's high and never sell when it's low. You're probably better off just letting it go to zero as a matter of fact. Now, I kind of digress there. I have a video on investing fundamentals as well. Take a look in the card above. But the answer to will Bitcoin go high or will it go low? Maybe, like with all other investments. But in this particular instance, the value of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, frankly, is gonna be determined by what happens to US dollar and other reserve currencies around the world. Which leads us to a quick digression on inflation. I'm sure you and everyone else knows, politicians love to print money. Doesn't matter what political party they're from, whether they're Labor or Tory, Democrat or Republican, Liberal, Conservative, Green, Whig, whatever. Your favorite politician loves to print money because they can use it to pay for things that make them seem pretty cool. I'm not sure if I'd be able to resist the temptation to do the same thing myself, but it is the way it is. The problem with that, however, is that the more money you print, the less perceived value it has among the people that use it. As you may or may not know, the dollar is not actually linked to anything. Back in the day, the dollar used to be linked to gold, and it stayed that way for over 100 years. In the 70s, Richard Nixon finally decoupled the dollar's linkage to the gold, and ever since then, it's been a floating currency based off of, more or less, the value of the U.S. economy. Meaning that politicians could print dollars for whatever purposes that they wanted. Now, let's be clear here. I'm not getting into a technical discussion on the nature of inflation. That requires a whole other separate video, which actually might make a good video sometime in the future. But let's just say that inflation occurs when the amount of goods and services remains relatively static, but the amount of currency in circulation increases. And with recent events in our economy, the virus crash in early 2020, and the possibilities of more lockdowns in the near future, as well as incoming governments with designs on spending a ton of money, money that frankly we already do not have, we can say for certain that there will be extra money circulating in the economy. People do disagree on that, however, perfectly reasonable. But the theory goes that politicians in Washington, you know, the political party is immaterial, but they will go power drunk, print money to satisfy their constituencies, ultimately destroying the US dollar in that process. People around the globe will lose confidence in the dollar's ability to be a store of value and will dump it for other currencies, including cryptocurrencies. And since Bitcoin is the first out of the gate and the most well-known, it is likely, some believe, to be the largest beneficiary of this major move. And they may already be right. As the US elections of 2020 have taught us, and frankly, 2016 and 2012 have taught us, American politics is getting more and more acrimonious. Factions of US political parties are taking things personal, not conceding elections, possibly even being victims of election fraud, and who knows? In any case, in order to appeal to the masses that are locked into their homes, they will of course print money to give them something to actually eat. Perpetual house arrest means economic upheaval, and the idea is that handing out tons of cash will keep the folks with the pitchforks and torches at bay. A little dramatic sounding, but that is the theory of the explosion of cryptocurrency prices. Also consider the fact that cryptocurrency is starting to be mainstreamed. Not that cryptocurrencies can be accepted at retail locations around the world, including gas stations, vending machines, and since cryptocurrencies is being openly talked about on mainstream news sources, Cryptocurrency is probably as close as ever to being a mainstream form of trading than ever before, meaning more people are eventually going to be jumping on board. Meaning the price of cryptocurrency, like many on Wall Street, including JP Morgan, are predicting, may go to 100,000 or more. And that means you get in right now, right? Well, there are also downsides. Like anything in life, not everything is always sunshine and lollipops. For example, Bitcoin, it's supposed to be decentralized and its transactions are verifiable from anyone in the network. But because of the nature of the network and the growth of Bitcoin itself, verifying transactions, the only way to generate new Bitcoins, has become co-opted by large operations who control most of the mining operations. In addition to that, many people believe that it's still a speculative bubble along the lines of the tulip mania that occurred in the Netherlands in the 17th century. Also an interesting topic for a video. Leave comments down in the description down below if that's something you want to see. But a lot of experts are expecting the current price to pop, leaving people who bought in at this price holding the bag. In addition to that, I love saying that by the way, I'm sure you've noticed by now, but because of the high energy consumption needed to validate transactions, we talked about mining earlier, Bitcoin takes up quite a bit of energy consumption. It's estimated that at the end of 2017, the global Bitcoin mining energy footprint was between one and four gigawatts of electricity. What's a gigawatt? A lot of watts. And in 2019, it was estimated to be at around seven gigawatts, which amounts at about 0.2% of the world's total energy consumption. And it's equivalent to the energy consumption of an entire country, Switzerland. The concern is that energy that can be used for other purposes, such as sheltering the homeless, feeding the poor, 
lighting your TikTok videos is being directed to other purposes, as well as the fact that it could be causing harmful side effects for our environment, climate change, and things of that nature. Another major concern is that another major concern is that due to the fact that just about anyone can use it anonymously, it is a little too easy to conduct illegal transactions, from either illicit drug purchases to bribery and money laundering. Now keep in mind, like I said a little bit earlier, politicians love to print money. When they realize that people are now using a completely different form of money, which they have no control over, more or less, will they start to crack down on it? In other words, make it illegal tender. See what I did there? One thing's for certain, you can't really put the toothpaste back in the container with this one. Whether it's Bitcoin or other alt currencies, alt is, you know, crypto geek speak for alternative cryptocurrencies, crypto is here to stay. Speaking of other altcoins, we'll be looking at various different types of coins in the near future. So be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it when it drops. Topics like this are not easy to turn into entertaining and engaging videos. I hope I nailed it. I'm sure you'll let me know in the description down below. But I'm about to get out of here. But before I do, remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan, but no action. That's a wish list. Take action on diversifying your cryptocurrency portfolio using Bitcoin. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.